Almost 30 days ago, we started off with one of the biggest tournaments on the planet. 32 teams battling it out for the World Cup trophy. Who's going to lift it? And now we've come down to one man scoring a header and giving a good dance for France. One man who comes to the end of the game, crashes into the photographers and takes off the headlines from England. It's Croatia, it's France, it's the finals of the World Cup. This is Score with Matt Coffey on Zindagi TV. My name is Jamal Alibai. Lego! What up everybody, it's finally here. The World Cup 2018 finals in Russia where one team will lift the World Cup trophy. This is Score with Matt Coffey on Zindagi TV. My name is Jomil and I'm joined by Richie who's excited for two things and I'm gonna ask him right now, is it the World Cup or is it university that you're about to join? The World Cup. The World Cup, of yeah. course, man. Welcome to the yeah. show. It's such a pleasure to meet yeah, you. Pleasure. So when it comes to club football, which team would you support? Uh, Chelsea. Chelsea all yeah. through. So if I had to guess which team would be yours in the World Cup, um, let's say England, maybe one of them? Yeah, England. Oh. Was, I was hoping they would win, of course, because I'm a big fan of the English Premier League. So which other teams are yours? Uh, which other teams do you support in the World Cup? Uh, Belgium. Belgium was, the, was my first team. Oh, so you had both your teams, England and Belgium, in the same group. Yeah, yeah. How was that unfolding for you in the World Cup? Well, it was crazy, but uh, they had to play against each other with their second team. So it was, it was quite not so entertaining, but Belgium won at the end of it all. There was a lot of speculation that in that group, they faced each other in the last match, like you said. They played their B team. Then there was speculation that these two would finally meet again in yeah. the finals. Yeah, in the final. <laughs> or are you looking forward to that one? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But unfortunately, now they are meeting the third place, fourth place playoff, man. That's crazy. And even for that match, which team would you support? Um, uh, maybe England. England? Yeah. yeah. Well, at least they're going home. Third place. <laughs> <laughs> which were the top performing teams for you? Uh, I'd have to say Brazil. Yeah. Croatia, because they won all the matches in the group, Uruguay as well, uh, Belgium of course, beating teams 5-0 and stuff, uh, England to some extent, though they didn't have the hardest of teams like Sweden in the knockout, um, yeah, pretty much that. But you've mentioned quite a few teams that have performed, but if I tell you Brazil, Germany and Argentina, these are teams that you'd expect to see either in the semi-finals yeah. or in the finals. Yeah. What do you think went wrong for these teams? Uh, well, probably Germany, maybe something wrong with the team itself, like tactics, something wrong. Do you think so missing out on Leroy Sané was such a yeah, huge blow? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, I'm a huge fan of him. Very good season at Man City, winning the league and having a couple of assists and goals. So I was really surprised to see him not make the, the team itself, not, not even the substitute. So would you say that Brazil have been just picking out big names, as per se, from the different leagues around the world to play in these matches, rather than choosing players, like you said, Douglas Costa, mm -hmm. who actually can play the game and bring an impact? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, not really, but, uh, you know, when you have people like William playing ahead of Douglas Costa, you can, it's understandable because he's a more established player. Same as uh, people like Jesus, who's just won the league with Man City. So I, I think I don't think there's a problem in that respect. So if you had to pick out now, we're shifting from different teams. Brazil, Belgium, that happened. Yeah. Let's shift to another two big teams, Argentina and France. Even in this one, I would still pick Argentina because they're such a huge team when it comes to the World Cup. But all of a sudden, Everything went wrong. Yeah. It went 4-3 in favor of France. Mm. So what ha what went wrong with Argentina? Altogether? Okay, well, with Argentina, I have to blame the coach. Uh, I don't think he got his team together well, like uh, missing out on the the striker Mar Mauro Icardi from Inter Milan was a big a downfall for Argentina, as in he's a prove, proven goal scorer. And he, he wasn't able to to really put a balance to his team, to his, with his attack and his defense. His mid, midfield was not very good, like the, with the aging Mas, Mascherano, and he wasn't able to, est to establish a perfect attack for, 
Argentina. Some games leaving out Higuain, this other one leaving Aguero out. And they weren't able to bring the best out of Messi. And you know, Messi needs good players around him to be at his best, as you see in Barcelona. Well, I didn't say it. Richie said it. Messi can be a one-man team, but he needs his support all yeah, around Yeah, definitely. Him. And it was really surprising, like you've said. The likes of Di Maria, Dybala, yeah. Higuain, Aguero, they were benched on some of the games. Yeah. You can't afford to bench these kind of superstars. Yeah. You're at the World Cup, you have yeah. three matches to prove yourself, and you wait till the end. Yeah. For you, Richie, um, what was the biggest shock of the tournament? Uh, the biggest shock was Germany finishing fourth <laughs> <laughs> in their group. Bottom of it all, the holders, the defending champions. That, that had to be the shock of the World Cup. Like, I didn't see that. For, as a matter of fact, Germany, a, a, many guys were saying they were the favorites to win the, to defend the title again. So it was really crazy seeing them get out this early. Do you think it's a curse? 2006 was won by Italy, they were knocked out yeah. the next World Cup. 2010 was Spain, they, they were knocked the out Italy. the next World Cup. 2014 was <laughs> Germany and this World yeah. Cup, they're out. So between France and uh, Croatia, the next World Cup, we won't see <laughs> either one. Yeah, yeah we, definitely that trend. But for me, uh, I take it more of, uh, I think when a team wins a World Cup like Germany, they should kind of look for a new approach. Like German used the same approach uh, to in this World Cup. Like uh, they lost some players like Philipp Lam, Schweinsteiger, but they, they should have uh, fixed some other, some sort of aspect in the team to, to uh, get into this World Cup. Which were the African teams rather that uh, you looked forward to this tournament? Okay, well, oh, of course, everyone looked forward to Egypt uh, with Mo Salah having done amazingly for for Liverpool in Europe. Uh, I also looked forward for Senegal, yeah, talents like Koulibaly, Mane, very good and established players. They looked a strong side heading to the World Cup and also for Nigeria, very young team. So we start with your first team, Egypt. Didn't do very well. Nigeria did okay. And Senegal were actually on the verge of going to yeah. the quarters. So what went wrong for your three African teams? <laughs> well, Egypt, uh, Salah, I, I don't think he was in his best form. As, as you know, he came from an injury in the Champions League final. So, you know, to get the best out of an Egypt team, you, you need your, best, your player to be at his best. And he might not have been at his best, but he did what he could with two goals, of course. And Nigeria, um, pretty young side. Uh, not too many big names apart from maybe Moses, Mikel, a leader in, mi in, in midfield. Um, what might have gone wrong for them is maybe lack of experience. The, the players may not have been experienced enough like the previous players like JJ or Kocha. And they, they really tried but unfortunately Argentina had too much for them. Well, we've seen the two semi-finals, France, Belgium, and England, Croatia. Are you happy with both the results, or do you feel there was one team that could have actually made it to the finals rather than the other? Uh, I, I thought Belgium would win. I, I'd have liked them to win, having never won a World Cup before France, I think winning twice. So I was kind of disappointed that they, they missed out, especially with such a cagey match, just one goal. Um, but of course, you have to look at what they did throughout the tournament, uh, an upcoming team. So until this match, Belgium hadn't lost a single match. They, had, they were the only team of the World Cup to win all their matches up until France. Yeah, yeah that was very good from them. Uh, of course, they had, unfortunately, they, had, they went out in the semi-final stage. Well, I have another stat for you. One of them, it is not coming home. <laughs> and the second stat is that this is the first team that has come out of two back-to-back -back penalty shootouts and they've won both of them. We're talking about Croatia and they edged out England coming from behind three times in a row in a knockout stage. Croatia, what is that? Oh, damn. Such a team of belief, a team of hard work. They fight till the end. 
such an amazing display for them. Uh, of course, against all the odds, they, they had to do all they could with talents like Luka Modric and Ivan Perisic, very good from them. They, they really fight and such, such a spirit can surprisingly help them win the title out of the odds. Well, we're looking forward to the final. Before I get into the predictions for the last two matches of the FIFA World Cup, that's the third place between England and Belgium, the finals between France and Croatia. What do you think of the VAR altogether in this year's World Cup? Well, personally, I'm a fan of VAR. I like it. Um, you know, there are some decisions that the referees can't see in real time and even the linesmen may not be able to see, so it's appropriate for them to go uh, confirm some occasions like we've seen uh, in some matches, some VAR decisions, video assistant come into handy, for example, a penalty being given, but players uh, convincing that, uh, that it may not have been, so the ref going and checking and confirming, oh, it, it really wasn't a penalty, so it's, it's very efficient and good, although I don't, I don't understand why some people don't like it, it's very good. Yeah. Do you feel like it will spoil or kill the momentum of the game every time you have to go back to VR and check, especially thinking about now it will be introduced to club life football? Yeah, uh, I don't think time, uh, them killing the momentum is such a big thing because the ref, it's a really quick thing, it's nothing to, okay of course they can do it quicker but with time I know it's gonna be very effective. Well, if you're for VAR, thumbs up. If you're not for VAR, <laughs> thumbs down. <laughs> France versus Croatia. Who do you think is going to take this one, Reggie? Okay, the bookies will have it that France would win, but uh, we all know this is a World Cup of surprises. Croatia can actually win this, um, but I, I, I really want France to win because I, I'm a fan of them. But I'd actually not mind if Croatia would, would be happy, a surprise, and a shock to the world. An amazing story it would be. So. Well, that's exactly the product of what a World Cup in Russia can do to you. You have no idea who's going to win, and you don't even care at the end of the day because this has been one of the most unexpected, outstanding, action-packed World Cup so far. For you, Richie, give me a prediction of a scoreline for the finals. Our finals, I have to say, it's going to be 2-0 to France. All right. Well, we're looking forward to the finals 2018 of the Russia World Cup. How about you share with us, who do you think is going to take the World Cup? Who's going to lift that prestigious trophy? Is it going to be France or is it going to be Croatia for the first time ever? You can comment below and send a chance to win yourself great hampers courtesy of Mac Coffee. How is it? Amazing. How are you now? <laughs>